Hey everyone, this is Kev. I'm back with another Dark Souls video. Um, the guide I was doing before went a little bit wrong. It was the So You're Intimidated by Dark Souls series. I recorded the third episode, some things went a bit wrong, and lost it. And then by then, the uh, obviously the character was a lot further ahead than the series was. So I could have carried on and missed out a massive chunk of important stuff, or I figured I could start again and maybe go through a bit faster, maybe on a slightly more intermediate level rather than beginner level. So we're going to have a go at recreating, uh, recreating Super Lady. There we go. All right, Super Lady Mark II. I probably should call her, but whatever, it doesn't really matter. Uh, this time I'm going to go with a bandit. Bandits are a pretty good starting class for the way I'm going to take this character. Uh, obviously I want the master key. I'm going to get that mouse cursor out of the way. Uh, we can look average, that's fine. I'm going to give her a... I don't know. Come on, what did we have last time? Ponytail B, was it? I think that was right, yeah. And it was red hair. Okay, we're off and running. Let's go. I'll skip these scenes because you probably saw them in the last video. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna fly through this initial section and most of the initial sections to be honest with you. I think Episode 2 of the last series, we got up as far as the dragon on the bridge. Or the drake, sorry. Um, yeah, the Hellkite drake. So we will kind of rush up to that point, to a certain extent at least. I don't want to rush too much. There are things I'll probably do this time before I even get that far that I didn't do last time. But we shall see. All right. Let's roll through here into the Asylum. If you haven't watched those previous two videos, I suggest going to do that, because I explained everything a lot more thoroughly in those. Um, I won't be explaining the stuff quite to the same extent in this. Like, for example, I'm not going to sit here and say, Oh look, the Asylum Demon came down, what a surprise! <laughs> that is an Asylum Demon, you should just run straight through there. I'm going to ignore that bonfire, because I don't particularly need it. I will grab the shield. Oh, took a bit of a hit there. The old arrow sticking out of my chest. <laughs> it's a good thing I'm undead. Okay, let's get this axe on. Take some of that. Now obviously if you are new to Dark Souls, you're probably not going to go through all of this as quickly as I am. And once again I suggest going back and watching my previous two videos. Even though the series doesn't complete, I do explain a lot of stuff in there that is useful for the beginners. And that's what they were for. Regrettably. Well now, oh, and, oh, now I would have... Okay, so we got our Estus Flask, we've got our... Oh, is he actually going to hit me? Thought I might get to him first, obviously not. Alright, Estus Flask and key to get through this gate. We've unlocked the gate downstairs. That'll be useful for a bit later in the game. I'm now going to go and deal with these guys. Come on, lads. Okay, this is not going especially well so far. I'm normally a lot quicker at doing this. Well, I'm in a rush anyway. Uh, I'm going to ignore the guy over there and just go straight through the fog gate.
Oh, that wasn't good. Something dreadful happened there. I'm not 100% sure what. I guess I didn't hit the attack button quickly enough. Okay, that is very odd. I can't even remember ever losing to that guy. <laughs> Uh, that's Dark Souls, I guess. Um, <laughs> let's head back up there and do this again. There you go, even once you've had a bit of experience, that can actually work to your disadvantage sometimes. You get a bit cocky, you think you know what you're doing. And then suddenly the flipping asylum demon of all things is kicking your ass. Alright. Let's not make those same mistakes this time. Get out of my way! Ugh. Okay, Mr. Demon, let's do this properly this time. Much better. Half his health bar. Dive under his legs. Right, should be good. There we go, that's how we do it. Pick up the blood stain. Did that pick up? Yes, it did. Right, we can head out of here now. That is more like how that encounter usually goes. I don't know what happened that first time. Right. Roll around here, grab this little thing down here. It's almost worthless. It's worth about 200 souls, I think, but I like to grab it anyway. And then we can go ahead and get out of here. I'm going to skip these videos again. And here we are back at Firelink Shrine, and we got some stuff to do. Not the least of which is make sure we've got a fast roll, because that is horrible. That means we're over 25% equipment load, so I'm going to drop down to... If we get rid of that, see what we can do. Ah, there we go. Got a fast roll back. That's what I'm looking for. It's not the most attractive body in the world. <laughs> Looking all gross and burned, but whatever. Alright, let's go get our essentials. That was some humanity. I'm not going to bother with the firebomb over to the right there this time. I will be going to get the homeward bones, at the very least. So I'm going to roll up here to where these elevators are. Or will be. Just drop out of here. Uh, homeward bones. There's also, if you're a priest, or cleric or whatever, there's some stuff in that chest. And in this chest, there's the invasion soapstones if you ever want to jump into PvP. I'm not going to do that in this video. In fact, I probably won't even turn human at any point, so... Not even worth it. You don't even really need those talismans, really. I don't know why I picked them up there. Uh, I'm also going to run over here. And grab that large soul of a lost undead. Hopefully avoiding the skeletons to a reasonable extent. Although they seem to have other plans. Come on. There we go. Now you can make a run around that graveyard, as I think I said last time, and grab the Zweihander and the Winged Spear. Which are both pretty cool weapons. The Zweihander, if you dump your strength straight up to 16, you can two-hand that from the start of the game. Which is pretty cool. And that sword, as I've said before, is slow, but it is a beast. Alright, what I am going to do... Uh, I'll get my dex up to 10. Yeah, dex up to 10. Just because there's a lot of stuff that has a dex requirement of 10. And I think I'll just dump the other two points into strength. <laughs> Okie dokie. Now we got to go and find some stuff. So.
I'm gonna go down here. We're gonna run for some essentials now. And by essentials, I mean we're gonna go grab some souls. Uh, oh, should I go and grab the Firekeeper soul? That might not be a bad idea. Yeah, Firekeeper Soul might be cool. Um, that would give us a nice early start on the Estus Flask. I will have to Homeward Bone out though, so did I send the lift back up there? No. Off you go, we're going to have to come back down that in a sec. Right, so while I'm here I will go, uh, I'm not going to bother picking up the s or whatever because I'm playing a quality build this time, which means I'm concentrating on a combination of uh, strength. Well, actually, no. I think I'm probably just going to go pretty much just strength. I'll grab these transient curses while I'm here. Not going to be using them until way later in the game, if at all. Just going to ignore the ghosts on this run. I didn't show this run on the last one. This is yet another one of those suicide runs where it doesn't really matter if you get killed as long as you get to your objective. So dodge the ghosts. Ghosts are bad. You cannot hit them unless you are cursed. There's a very small platform there with some ghosts. I'm going to grab the Firekeeper Soul and then bone out. There we go. I don't think I took any damage there. I got a little bit clipped by some ghosts and almost fell off, but ultimately came out okay. And now we can run down to here, reinforce that, and before we've even started the game, we have Estus Flask plus one, therefore we heal more damage. So that's cool. Or rather our Estus Flasks heal more hit points. So yeah, off and running. Now, next thing I'm going to do is go to... What am I going to do next? I'm going to roll through the Valley of Drakes. And I think I'm going to grab the soul of a proud knight that is over there. I'm not going to touch a store of straight sword and I'm not going to touch the dragon crest shield. Because both of those will wake up the undead dragon which... I am not really equipped to deal with right now. I could probably withstand the initial hit and then run for it, but I'd rather not risk it just yet. Instead, I'm just going to leave those be, because I won't be using either one anyway. The spider shield that I started with has 100% physical damage reduction, so that'll do me for most of the game. And I do kind of want the Grass Crest Shield instead anyway. Even though it doesn't have 100% damage reduction, it does grant a stamina buff. Which is cool. So we're leaving the dragon alone. That dragon won't wake up unless you touch the other two items, which are the Astora's Straight Sword and Dragon Crest Shield. Just grabbing that soul won't do anything. Right, you're going to keep to the left here, run right after the attack triggers. Okay, I'm not going for the red tear stone ring. I don't plan to be getting low on health. At least not purposefully in this uh, playthrough. And I'm going to have more useful rings from the start anyway. We are instead going up this elevator. And what we're going to do up here is go and be a bit cheeky with a black knight. Now you remember the Black Knight I took out in the last videos. He was a bit... yeah. He was a hassle. <laughs> um, but there is a way to cheese this one. So I'm going to rest here just in case the uh, unfortunate happens and I die. I'm going to get my shield out because there's no way I want to take a full hit from this guy with a lack of armour on. Just run out to here. Get him over near the edge. He's having none of it right now. Alright, I need to... I need to get him at a better angle. Uh, 
Ah, didn't turn around in time. Yeah, that's always a risk. Um, actually, that's for the best anyway, because I want to pop a humanity to increase my item drop find. Uh, there's a thing in your stats called, it's over on the right hand side there, called item discovery. It's always at 100, but it can go up to 450, I think? Anyway, the point being that if you use a humanity point, so you just, you're not turning human, but you have one point of humanity there, that increases your drop rate to 150, which is a pretty big uh, leap. Any points of humanity beyond that only raise it by, well, it's diminishing returns at that point. It's not by much. So I'm just going to go a bit quiet while I try and deal with this guy. Oh, I, I thought I was clear. <laughs> well, oh, there's some time to recover. He was having none of it. Oh, this is a guy who usually I... I very rarely require more than one go at this guy, but he can be a little unpredictable. Right, so I'll grab all that again. He's <laughs> taking me off. Dark Souls, everybody. Okay. Let's try this again. Upside of that one is because <laughs> it took far less time to die. My souls and humanity are already there, right next to the bonfire. So that's pretty cool. Alright, come on, Mr. Knight. How's about you don't send me over the side this time? Give me a plonk. Come a bit closer. Come on. Over here. What we're trying to do is get him into a position where he attacks me, gets a bit closer to the edge, and then I can wheel around the back of him, backstab him, and he will actually fall off the side. We had a bit of a video problem there, which is a terrible time to have it happen, and now I'm dead as a result. So that's not cool. <laughs> um, right. Let's give this another go. Should this work, it will be worth it, I assure you. Because, well, aside from the fact I'll be able to get to the Grass Crest Shield, which is what I came here for in the first place, this guy also drops a really sweet weapon sometimes. If you're lucky. Come on, get close to the side. That might... Oh, I had a chance. Missed it. This could be it. No. Come on. Come on. No, don't back away. Come over here. Oh, he's being really irritating today. Ah! <laughs> of course, he would leave it until I'm recording live to... Be a complete goit. Alright, this time. We're learning. This is how you play Dark Souls. You learn from your mistakes. Come on. A little bit further. You know where I want you. You know where I want you. Come on. Come on. Come on, Mr. Knight. Look at me. I'm right by the edge. Give me a... Yes, that's what we wanted. Okay, now go over the side. There we go. Okay. Now, do I get a halberd for my troubles? Yes! Alright, I'm pretty sure that's the weapon we're going to end up using. <laughs> going to need a lot of strength first, though. But that halberd starts off at 245 damage. It is a special weapon, so it needs Twinkling Titanite to upgrade. <clears throat> we'll go and farm that in a moment. Uh, that means it can also only go up to plus 5, but that is a monstrous plus 5. That'll get you through, well, the whole game, <laughs> if you want to play that way. Uh, yeah, it is a dangerous, dangerous weapon. Does, however, require 32 strength to use one-handed. But that means that we can get, <clears throat> what, 22 strength? 
Yeah, 22 strength, and we'll be able to two-hand it. So, that's good. <clears throat> now, next job. Grab the Grass Crest Shield. We're going to want that. Uh, only 95% physical damage reduction. But, it's a... Uh, it has a ability attached to it, which says right there, slightly speed stamina recovery. And that's useful. So I'm going to use that. I'll plop it on my back for the most part. And then we can rock on over here. Got some souls for the night. Got the halberd, which that's the least they could give me after that amount of fails. God, I can't believe I failed that much. That was... That was bad. <laughs> I've never, I've never had that happen that many times before. Like maybe two, three times max, but that was ridiculous. All right, so we're running up here, and right up here there should be. There we go, a twinkling titanite bearing bug thing. I forget what they're called. Crystal lizard. That's the one. Two twinkling titanites straight off the bat. So already I can probably put that, with the 2,000 souls per level required, I can probably put that halberd up two points to a plus two. Uh, the titanite chunk is useful for maybe later on in the game, depending if I want to switch weapons, but the chunk is used when you want to take a weapon up. To, you can't do it with the halberd, but for other normal weapons you can take them from plus 11 to plus 14, and that requires chunks. So you're by killing that crystal lizard, you're getting that ball of rolling. Um, now, do I want to go to Blight Town first? Yes, I do. Okay, so we're going to go back down the hill. You can go to the blacksmith at the Undead Parish via this route. There's a few obstacles to overcome on the way, but it's not too difficult. And we will do that once we've got some more Twinkling Titanite. But first... I want to go and grab some uh, some resources because we're going to need souls as well. So being very careful around that corner because that is the uh, area where a lot of people will get killed. Notice how quick my stamina regenerates while this shield is equipped. By the way, compared to when it's not there. Ooh. Right, let's do a full bar look. Alright, no stamina. That's how quick it is. Now we put the shield on. Go down to no stamina. Little bit of quickness there. It's not quite as quick as the item we are about to go and get. However, the two do stack. So when I'm using the Grass Crest Shield and the Chloranthi Ring, which we're about to go for, that is an excellent combo for stamina recovery. <clears throat> okay, so... Going back through the Valley of the Drakes. When those guys kick into their lightning attack, you'll see them lock onto you. They will not turn at that point. Now, can we get this guy to jump? No, he's going to lightning attack. That could be annoying. If he doesn't... Sometimes he jumps and tries to do a, like, diving physical attack, and it's quite easy to run underneath him in that direction. If he does the lightning attack, it's not too difficult to dodge, but you can get caught on his tail's hitbox on the way back round, which will then, because he turns clockwise, it'll fly you off the cliff, which is not cool. However, we made it. Which is cool. So running, 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 running. Um, I might actually go and... Hmm... I'm just thinking if it's a good idea to go and rest at the Firelink Shrine, but I don't think I want to do that, actually. Alright, when you go in through here, it's all about stamina uh, management. You want to make sure that you're sprinting when you need to sprint and resting when you need to rest, but you never stop moving is the important thing. This is the back way into Blight Town that is only accessible if you've got the master key. Alright, so go down there. 
And then we can just jump down here. Dodging that guy. We don't want to deal with him just now. You've got to be very careful with these drops, by the way. But you need to do them fairly quickly. Okay, and then we jump onto the water wheel. And we're on our way down into Blight Town. I'm going to pop an Estus just because I've got some time. Now, this is the Great Swamp. And it is not a very nice place. A lot of people hate this place. And it's because, once you're in it, not only do you get inflicted with poison incredibly quickly, but it also slows you down. And we are particularly going for a few items, so... I'm going to run around here. There is, if you don't have the confidence, there's a bonfire in there. But I don't want to use that because it means I'll have to walk back up and I would rather homeward bone back to the campfire we were at just now. Grab that. Oh, you're jumping down on top of me, apparently. Right. There's another large soul of a proud knight over here. These are worth, I think, 3,000 souls each. So, yeah, that's like... 9,000 souls for very little effort, really. And that's going to be useful when we get to our stuff. Oh, I'm having a bit of a frame slowdown. Going to have a quick restart of the video. Alright, and we're back. Hopefully that didn't affect us too much. Alright, so we're going to run over here. Past these slugs. You do not want to get hit by those guys. <laughs> Up this tree trunk. This is a run that I would say only really do if you're comfortable, you know, once you're comfortable with the controls. That is useless. But there's an invisible wall, and another invisible wall. Yeah, once you're comfortable with controlling your character, and maybe you've played uh, the beginning of the game at least, like you've run through the berg at least once or twice, then maybe go down and do this run on your next character. Right, drop an Estus flask here. Again, we're not going to use this bonfire. Now, this is where you've got to be really careful. Because things can go very wrong. So what I'm going to do is try and get the Chloranthi ring. And you really don't want to die doing this. So you've got to sort of find out where you want to drop off from. You can see it just down there. And it's usually, I like to stand just to the left of that branch there. And then if you just drop off carefully, hopefully, there we go. Alright, I didn't die. You can see I'm still poisoned, but now we've got the Chloranthi ring, I can equip that, and my stamina will increase just ridiculously. So while I'm inside this tree trunk, I'm just going to drop my stamina out quickly. Watch how quick this goes back up. Jesus! That is useful. Okay. And I'm going to run back up to the top. Do 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 do. Run up the tree. Running up the tree. Poison's about to run out, which is good. Take another swig. You can cure poison with a thing called uh, purple moss. But there's, I mean, there's several creatures that drop it, most of which are in Blight Town there. And you've also got... Um, well, actually, no, the trees in the forest are actually a really good drop for that stuff. But... Is there one down here? There we go. But yeah, I'm obviously not at that point yet. Right, so I'm going to take these suckers out. So yeah, I'm waiting for poison to heal up of its own accord. Right, now, this area of the tree... Has, there's two shelves, this one and another one that is close by. You drop down onto the same branch off of the bar, off of the shelf by the bonfire, and rather than going all the way up this branch, you drop off at another shelf that you can see it just over there. And both shelves have the ability to respawn Twinkling Titanite uh, crystal lizards, but you will need to quit out of the game. And this, this is where it gets a bit tedious. Because you need to force them to respawn. And there's... 
I think three or four in on this shelf and four or five on the other shelf. And it will sometimes require a couple of game restarts. But it's worth it because you can knock out a good, like, well, 14 plus Twinkling Titanites, which means if you've managed to get the Black Knight Halberd, that means you can upgrade that to plus five as soon as you've got 10,000 souls. You may not even be able to use it yet, but you will at the very least... Where are we? Super Lady. Yeah, you will at the very least be able to upgrade it to plus five, so when it is time to use it, you can just wreck stuff. Okay, you can see this one respawn there. Now, I'm going to call this uh, end for this video and farm these guys while I'm offline. Well, you know, not recording. Got a couple of green shards there as well, that'd be useful. Uh, green shards, once you unlock the ability to trade stuff in, they are worth five standard titanite shards or you can use them as green shards to upgrade your weapon through the fire and magic trees but I'm here for the twinkling titanite because I got a halberd and that is cool alright so I'm going to do the quick game thing again and we'll call that a day for this video and I will see you in part 2 because that is when we're going to get around to well, hopefully get using the Black Knight Halberd and getting through the Undeadburg. So I will see you next time.